Air Venture Oshkosh. We're here toward the close of the show. Today I've got a special privilege. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm going to talk with Robert Hamilton, the head of marketing for Dynon, one of our great supporters in the LSA space. These folks do a lot of neat products. We've talked at length about their wonderful sky view with the synthetic vision. But today, well, we've got so many things to talk about, I have to ask Robert's help to know which things they are. Dynon's made several announcements here at the show. Let's take them in order here. Okay, well, thank you, Dan. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about, we kept secret until the, the show started on Monday, it's our new D1 pocket panel. At all these shows we go to, the number one question we asked is, wow, your stuff is great, I want to put it in my plane, in my Bonanza, or my Cessna 172, or my Mooney. And we say, we're sorry, we can't do it. The next thing they say is, well, why you don't... You can't permanently mount it in there. You can't permanently mount our equipment and hook it up to the pitot and static line and such. Okay. So the next thing they always, they always say is, well, why don't you make it portable? And we finally, uh, we <laughs> listen to our customers a lot and we say, well, maybe they have a point. So the D1 is a, uh, we call it the D1 pocket panel. It's a portable <laughs> EFAS. It, it's a it, tiny little thing. It, it is tiny, uh, it truly is pocket size. Uh, it comes with a four hour battery or you can charge it from the ship's power on this uh, cigarette lighter or it comes with an AC adapter. It has our attitude technology in it. It's a true ADA HARS. It's not a, uh, a, a smartphone app or a tablet app. Uh, which which has uh, you know sensors in it. This is a true AHARS, same technology we use. Yeah, on our those are kind panel. of consumer sensors. They do Thanks. some neat stuff. And, and just for comparison, to show you how big it is, half the country has one of these. There's an iPhone. The iPhone is actually longer, and that's a little bit thicker than this. But that is a really small device. I'm fascinated by the fact that guys with Bonanzas and other kinds of aircraft with all certified equipment in it have come to you and said, please do this. Yeah, well, you, if you have an aircraft, it's a wonderful aircraft, it might be worth forty dollars or $50,000. It doesn't make sense to put $100,000 in a glass course, panel, right. perhaps. And that's about what it costs for those folks. Yeah, so people are turning to some of the, you know, the smartphones and such, which isn't, you know, it's not safe. It's not aircraft, aircraft quality. What we wanted to do is give pilots an option to make a true AHARS. Now, on top I of see it working here yeah. as you're as you're accenting your words. Yep. The, uh, the horizon's going around here, so yep, it's exactly. a functional device just sitting there. Yep. Now, now how do you how, how are you going to put well, this in Well, let me mention airplane. one more thing. Okay, we want to add some other information. We can't connect to your pedo and static system. Okay. So instead, there's a GPS built into it, very sensitive one. So we substitute. GPS ground speed for airspeed, altitude, ah, okay, okay. and GPS vertical speed and GPS track. Uh, by the way, you see here, this is your turn rate and this is your ball. So you have all the main <laughs> instruments. You don't want to use it for landing because it's not airspeed. We, you know, we, we make sure people know it's a GPS ground speed. Uh, but that's really, we wanted to add sure, those extra functionality. Sure, so you're not going to fly the airplane in slow environments and use exactly. this as a uh, used to, But you'll have an airspeed indicator on there for that anyway. Well, so. you know, the point here is this is for backup in case right. other things happen. Okay. But so, a lot of information in a very small device. Okay, yep. so now I've got this thing. I say, great, it's wonderful. I want to put it in my airplane, but I don't want to sit there and hold it. Yep. Okay. So uh, we provide, in the, in the box, we provide part of the package. Part of the package. Okay. We provide two solutions, and we'll tell you a secret about a third one you can do yourself. But first, we have a ram mount. It's okay. a very nice suction yeah, Suction mount with the release on it. A ram makes very high quality uh, devices. A lot of people are using them. Yes, they're common. We made this part, and the D1 will just snap right into oh, that. Look at that. Okay. Beautiful. The second thing and we that did, you can hook either onto your panel or onto the glass somewhere. Exactly. There are a quite often of you can put it on the side of your glass, uh, the side of your windshield, and then it turns this way. You can have it right here. And this is still receiving stuff, kind of no matter where you put it. I mean, it's doing it inside a steel building here. So. Well, actually, and it's a good point. It's a very sensitive uh, GPS in it. If you mount it real low on the panel, we actually it comes again. Everything comes with it. A remote antenna ah, okay, that you can perfect. put up on the. Uh, if you put it up on the glare shield, it's going to get plenty of GPS. Okay. If it's down here, then you, you might... got a little add-on uh, exactly. antenna to go with it. Excellent. Okay. So what's the second solution? Second solution. We're kind of proud of this. This is uh, the same mount. The bracket that holds the device the bracket, is the same. Okay. Except on the back, it has a three and eighth inch <laughs> hole with screw studs, and you just use a little finger pre pressure, 
and squeeze it together. Sure, just kind of like putting a lens cap on a camera. That's exactly it. And it snaps in place, and it's a very, very firm mount. Wow, that is in there, yeah. And, and again, just snaps right snaps in place. That in. I love that. So you take one instrument out, and like an old ADF well, that you're not you using anymore. Don't take instruments out. Uh, okay. But I actually have a certified type certificate airplane with an MT3 and an Well, hole almost in it. all airplanes got a hole somewhere. So you're using one of those. Yep. Um, and mounting it that way. Now you said you had a clever idea for a third okay. solution. What's so that? So internally, we always refer to this as the Velcro EFIS. <laughs> uh, the nice flat, flat back, you could put a big sheet of Velcro in, get some Velcro that has some high temperature, uh, so it doesn't, you know, There's all slip varieties off. of yeah. that stuff, yes. Um, we, we can't call it the Velcro EFIS because uh, it's trademark, uh, but it's a wonderful product and you can snap that right up on your panel anywhere. Uh, sure, then locate it yep. anywhere you want, which could again be on your glass. If you're willing to stick some adhesive uh, Velcro yep. to it or something like that. So exactly, excellent. Well, that's the D1 now, and, and I don't know if you make it any smaller, you have to call it a D1 half or yeah, something. Exactly. So, uh, but that is a neat little device uh, in line with the D100, D12, and all the other products that you've had in the past. So wonderful. What else have you got for us, Robert? Well, of course, our flagship product is the Skyview system, right, which is what we're seeing here in the, in the yeah, panel mount, here. simulated panel mount, huh? Uh, and we keep adding functionality to it. Uh, what we just introduced at the show is um, our ADSB in receiver. And by itself, it receives all the weather from the ADF, ADSB system. Which, which means are, you don't need to buy weather anymore. Yeah, with it's this. free weather from then on out. Uh, the FAA is covering the whole country. There's just a tiny swath down the middle that's, that they'll have covered by the end of the year. Okay. So anywhere in the US, you'll have uh, ADSB weather in. And then, if you put that in conjunction with our Mode S transponder that goes with the Skyview, it's a, uh, a compliant Mode S um, outputter with a 1090ES squitter on it, and that allows you to receive traffic on the, um, the, the ADSB in device. So, in the past, we've had um, TIS traffic and other types of traffic input. Now we have full ADSB traffic input as well. So let's back up just a second and explain what all that alphabet soup means because ADSB has been around for a while. A lot of people that rolls off their tongue but they're not even sure what it means. Uh, and what it really does mean to people is a method, a new method that the FAA is coming out with that's going to kind of replace radar installations and provide information about where, where other, other airplanes are in the sky yep. and what weather is going on. So really a much more capable system, but we once heard about this as being very expensive hardware, and we don't need to talk about the price of the unit, but you brought it way, way, way down. We are you? so lucky in the experimental world because we get to do things and use new technologies and put them, adapt them very quickly. So yes, it's not $10,000 or anything. The it's a fraction of that. It's a fact. fraction yeah, so, of that. So that's really cool. You get this neat new technology, yeah. what FAA is categorizing under their next gen, the next yeah. thing that's going to happen. Our ADSB receiver is less than $1,000. And so. this is a fairly small box course. You're not going to see this. It's going to get mounted yeah. somewhere under the panel or somewhere else. But even that doesn't add hardly any weight to it. It's There's a wonderful a, capability. A little technical detail that's uh, uh, interesting. Uh, this is an internally mounted, you can put it anywhere in your aircraft. Uh, you'll want to put an external antenna on. And okay. just as a reminder for everybody, these are ground stations, so put it on the bottom of your aircraft. <laughs> Don't put it on the top of your aircraft. Uh, that's the one issue. It's probably in the instruction manual, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, good. With, panel, with uh, some of the, the, you know, the nice portable ADSB receivers that go up on your windscreen, you got to make sure that you have access uh, to the ground station. Excellent. So. And all this all ties into this wonderful available, this is the large screen here. You've got this in a slightly smaller screen if the panel's a little more compressed. Yeah. You've got two variations on the theme. This has the synthetic vision that we love so much that shows you what you can't see even when you can't see very well. And then, of course, all the information in the world, GPS, engine information, all swappable back and forth in a variety of ways, enough so that I had to go take the Dynon class to learn more about it. And I did learn a lot from Excellent. Kirk in that class. Yeah, so Kirk is a good teacher. He does very well at that. You need to keep that up because okay. all of us need that kind of training. That's yeah, we all realize that transition training and equipment training is very important. It's one of the, we're totally behind. There's an industry initiative to get more training. New pilots, uh, particularly transition training and initial flight training, 
we want you to know your equipment perfect before you hop in that plane. Yeah, it's so. important for safety, but yep. it's also important to get all the value all out of it. All the value there's out so of it, yeah. much there. Yeah. It's a little daunting to take on, but once you get used to it, wow, glory. Once you, once you know what's going on, it's quite easy to use. So. so you've added one more functionality to this that we've talked about here this week with the launch of the Rotax IS or 912 IS engine, fuel injected. Uh, they come with a box, uh, Rotax supplies a box that will give you information about it, but I've heard you just announced something yeah. about that. What's that, Robert? Yeah, we have a lot of customers, uh, a lot of our LSA customers are switching to the 912 IS, and the home builders, there are some switching sure, right. as well. Of course. And instead of having the, all the instruments, all the sensors on the engine come directly to us, it goes into the the IS engine controller. Yes, they've got more electronics on that engine yeah. now. Than they actually have two. They have two computers that are running the engine. And so we have a new module that replaces our existing engine module. Instead of connecting to all the sensors, it connects us to the CAN bus. You just go get their stuff, basically. Well, it's already built in. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you're drawing out of that information, supplying it to this device. Exactly. Beautiful. Yep. And you just announced that this week? We just announced it, and we'll be shipping it in a week. Excellent. We love it when that happens. Yeah. So. There's so much you've given us here, but there's still a lot more to be had. Where do we go online to find? We're watching this on YouTube. We're already at our okay. computer. What do we type in to get to the uh, okay. to the information resource here? Well, www.dynonavionics, D-Y-N-O-N, and it's pronounced Dynon, uh, dynonavionics.com. And we try to keep our website current and up to date all the time. You do a lot. You've got instructional videos on there as well to help people learn more about it, even if you can't go to the Dynon. I'm glad you mentioned that. We are keeping adding new, new Skyview videos to not only put product features on there, but also training on the videos uh, uh, directly in, our, in our video series. So we keep adding them every month or uh, half a month, we, we add more videos. I've looked at them. You'll want to look at them. They're good stuff. Dynonavionics.com. You can get more information on my website about Dynon, also about all kinds of aircraft, about the 912 engine. All that's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us today.